Wiregrass Daily News Sports. This is your daily look at sports in the Wiregrass and the Southeast. Dothan Wolves on 96.9, the legend producer Philip Jordan breaks the news, covers the games, and talks to experts in the Wiregrass and Southeast. And now, Philip Jordan. All right, everybody, my guest today here on the Wiregrass Daily News Sports Podcast is the voice of the Florida State Seminoles, the 4-0, fifth-ranked Florida State Seminoles. That is Jeff Colhane. And, uh, Jeff, I appreciate you taking some time on the show to talk some Seminoles with us. Hey, Philip, great to talk to you again. And a uh, fun start to the season for Florida State fans everywhere as you laid out the, the resume. It's been an excellent start with some big games. Uh, I'd be lying if I said our – Blood pressure and heart rate at times wasn't elevated uh, on certain Saturdays, but uh, Mike Norvell and his staff have done an amazing job. These student athletes have been fantastic, and now we hit a stretch here, of three straight home games. It's great to be back home for a few weeks. Yeah, I bet, I bet, uh, especially uh, going to uh, to Clemson, uh, going through that stretch. It's a uh, home sweet home after the off week, and that's kind of where I want to start it off the off week. And I'm not. Want, uh, my question isn't leading into team with off week. How was the off week uh, for you, Jeff? Uh, did you sit at home, watch some games Saturday? How was it different for you? You know, it was it was tremendous. Um, there's obviously a little bit of a, you know, a breath, if you will. You kind of, you know, re- reconnect with some things that you're unable to do with uh, the buildup for a big game on a Saturday and all the week during all the work during the week that goes into it. And, you know, for me, my favorite part about it, Philip was I was uh, able to watch my son, uh, Alexander, who's four years old. He plays, plays T-ball here in town. And so it was the first time I got to watch him in per- uh, person play. So I missed the first two since we were on the road at Boston college and at Clemson. And so that was pretty special for me to be able to watch my son play a uh, T-ball game. So, had a blast doing that and then enjoyed a busy, busy Saturday full of sports, man. We put our feet up, uh, did some work around the house, you know, some some work out in the yard and uh, took care of some some things out there and then watched a lot of football. And I watched the Ryder Cup on Saturday as well. I'm a big golf guy, golf fan, I should say, and um, listened to a lot of different broadcasts. I like to listen to a lot of the great play-by-play and radio crews uh, around the country at all levels and so it was fun. It was a nice day spending time and relaxing. And now we're back to work. Now we got some big games coming up here in the month of October. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any game from Saturday really stick out to you? Well, yeah, a lot of games. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a good Saturday. <laughs> it was a good Saturday. You know, I, I the first one that comes to mind is watching Georgia Auburn and, and Auburn being ahead double digits and Georgia coming from behind and winning that game. Um, you know, obviously at night in the ACC, uh, you had Notre Dame come from behind and win at Duke uh, in, in amazing fashion. I'm sure, like we all thought, Sam Hartman was going to make a big play with his legs, uh, which was wild on fourth and 16 um, to see him do that. Uh, hopefully Riley Leonard's OK for Duke, who got hurt on the final play. I hope he's OK. Mm-hmm. He's a re- really good player and makes them go in a lot of ways. Um just keeping tabs on a, on a lot of games uh, across the country. Um, you know, Baylor coming from behind down 35 to seven at UCF and winning that game 36, 35 is a, is a huge win for them mm-hmm. in the big 12. And so, you know, you just keep kind of keep uh, the scoreboard watching and you try and watch as, as many games as you possibly can watch Clemson, Syracuse and, you know, with Syracuse coming to town here next weekend on uh, the, the uh, 14th of October, get a little look at them and what they've done off to a good start this season. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of games, a lot of great matchups, ranked matchups, and we're going to see uh, the, the season just continue to get better and better, Philip. with really it doesn't feel like a dominant team right now mm-hmm. in college football. There's a lot of really good teams, which makes for great theater down the road. Yeah, it's going to make the uh, the playoff uh, push during the season really interesting in college football. Uh, the four state Seminoles four now start as I said they're coming off the uh, off week number five in both polls. I'll I'll admit it. You don't have to. I think they should be rated a little bit higher because I think they have the two uh, best wins of anybody this season. But hey, that's just my opinion. Uh, coming down uh, if you're from Dothan, Alabama, 
Uh, what, what's been the most impressive thing uh, with you in the 4 0 start for the Seminoles? I would agree with you, number one. Uh, their wins over LSU and Clemson. I think everyone obviously signs up for that back in July, and I don't think everybody believed they would win both of those games, uh, and they did to start 4-0. Uh, I think the, the most impressive thing to me is with this Mike Norvell-led team in an era in college athletics where uh, you have the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness, Mike Norvell has built – a family atmosphere here, even with a lot of newcomers and first-year guys helping this team win games, veteran guys of college football, it feels like these guys have been playing together for four or five years, and that's not the case. And it hasn't been a walk in the park throughout the first month of the season either. And so it's a team that has been challenged and has faced adversity, and they've figured out ways to win, and they're not playing their best football either. Far from it. And so they've beaten LSU. They win at Clemson, ending a 25-game home winning streak in the ACC for the Tigers. Uh, you know, the Boston College game is an emotional game for BC with the red bandana game, honoring Wells Crowther's heroism on 9-11. And so this is a team that's been through a lot already. And only one home game where a lot of the schools in Power 5 have played at least three. And so it's been a team that's been challenged. They've not played their best football. Uh, they're not running the football to their capability, and yet they're just finding ways to win. Some people look at it and think that's a negative. I would look at it and say others better watch out when this team starts clicking because uh, we saw in the second half against LSU how good this team is when it's clicking on all cylinders, and LSU didn't have a shot. They didn't even have a say in that game in the mm -hmm. final 30 minutes back on uh, September the 3rd. So. Uh, not playing the best brand of football, yet still winning games, still facing adversity, finding way to uh, ways to win games, and doing it with complementary football in all three phases. Yeah, I just look at the Florida uh, Florida State's game with LSU, and then also with Clemson. You said you know first half maybe not going the way you want it. Second half, I mean, especially in that third quarter against LSU. I mean, it just was like LSU had no answer. It just there was nothing they could do. It's just like you got to sit back and just they're going to do what they want to do. And then Clemson, you know, got down 10 0, 17 to 7, kept fighting back, had the defensive touchdown. You go in overtime, you find a way to win. This team's got resiliency. And I think that's a big thing as you move all into this season because hey, you're going to be challenged even more. I and mean, there's going to be bigger games down the road. Yeah, it's never easy. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, look at Georgia, who is right now the team that everybody's chasing. And Georgia's won back to back national titles, looking to do something that hasn't been done since the 1930s winning three in a row, and hasn't been a walk in the park for the Bulldogs. I mean, they mm -hmm. were down double digits at half at home to South Carolina and down double digits at Auburn, two, two of the teams that right now are not on the upper echelon of the SEC this season. Uh, two great programs, but but not in the upper echelon. And so uh, it, it's not all, you know, sunshines and palm trees and roses and a walk on the, you know, walk on the park, a walk on the beach. It's going to be hard. You're going to have injuries. You have to overcome things. You play good teams that are motivated. And, look, I know Clemson got beat at Duke and whatever. Uh, Clemson's still really good. Mm -hmm. And I know they're not ranked. They should be. They're a top 25 team in my book. Uh, Clemson uh, is going to have something to say about this, I really feel like, at the end of the year in the ACC still, uh, if they can stay healthy. So uh, it's been a, a – Good start from that standpoint. And even the great Florida State teams, it wasn't a walk in the park for those teams throughout the year. Even the 99 team, we just had the great documentary from the ACC Network on we're number one, you know, the first wire-to-wire -wire number one ranked team in college football history. It's a team that was down double digits at Clemson in the first Bowden Bowl at mm -hmm. halftime. It had to come from behind right. a win in a low-scoring game. And so – you know, every season, every great team has their moments where they have to get a little bit lucky and overcome some adversity and, and find ways to win. Uh, and, and that's how it's gone uh, this year to start, where you, you see the resiliency shown by this Florida State football team. And like I said, I, I think it's a huge positive. This team can build on, uh, use this experience later in the year if they face that same kind of adversity again to overcome and go out and find a way to get a W. Yeah, you know, talking about, you know, facing adversity, and he gets Clemson especially, Keon Coleman, 
what a great addition to this team. And it seemed like to me whenever they needed a big play, or, uh, especially down around the red zone, I mean, he goes and gets it. I mean, he has turned into a go-to receiver, obviously, for, for Jordan Travis. And also Johnny Wilson, tight end Jaheim Bell. But what, what's been your, your thoughts and your takeaways from seeing Keon Coleman, how he has gelled with this team? Yeah, he's been great. I mean, he's locked in. Uh, he, he's on a mission, quite honestly, uh, Philip. I, I think the plan for Keon is he wants to have a tremendous season this year and win a national championship and then move on to the NFL uh, and, and begin his professional career there. And so he's been locked in. He has done everything that's been asked of him and then some. He's done a great job uh, meshing in with his teammates in a short amount of time. He's obviously done a great job in meshing with his quarterback, Jordan Travis, in the passing game and building that relationship. Uh, and so what an addition to this offense and uh, the amount of big plays that he has made when the lights have been brightest ha has been truly remarkable. His amazing game against LSU with three touchdown grabs, the game winner against Clemson, um, you know, he got – he got shut out of BC, but I think that was more so what the defense was doing to take him away than anything Florida State was was doing that day. And so uh, he's been outstanding. Uh, he is a guy that I know when Mike Norvell um, found out that, that Keon Coleman was coming to Florida State as a pretty happy head coach and play caller, and you see why mm -hmm. uh, right now. And Johnny Wilson has had he's been tremendous. You know, he had the the one game against Southern Miss where he didn't play his best brand. But he, he's a tremendous player. He, he's an NFL caliber wide receiver. And this wide receiver room is still getting healthy. Kentron Portier, Ja'Kai Douglas, uh, all looking to play essentially their first meaningful snaps of the season. So uh, it's a group that still has a, a lot out there for them. And, and obviously, Keon has been a headliner for this offense and, and this passing game at that wide receiver spot. You know, looking at the defense, I think this is a situation for Florida State. I think some people just look at stats and say, okay, they're 12th in the ACC, 400, over 400, barely over 400 yards allowed a game. But through the air, teams are averaging 272. But also say you're playing LSU, and let's look at what Jaden Daniels has done to everybody that he's played this year. He is lighting up the scoreboard. Uh, the defense isn't helping him at LSU, but, you know, LSU, Jaden Daniels is doing his thing. And he played Clemson, K Club, and it had a really good game there. So I think that's misleading for the I think by the end of the year, Jeff, that will work its way out. And then Florida State should be higher toward the top of the ACC. But uh, uh, what, what's been your thoughts on the defense so far? You know, when they've been asked to bow up and make plays, they've done it. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be my thoughts on this Florida State defense. Um, you know, they haven't been dominant. Uh, they have not been an overwhelming group. But when they've been put under the microscope and they needed to make it happen, they made it happen. And how many times have we seen them backed up where they have held teams out of the end zone and, and forced a field goal or uh, forced uh, zero points uh, on that particular drive, not allowed anything on the scoreboard. And, you know, you can talk about who's been out and, you know, how many yards a team has, and they don't score. Who cares? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. You'd like the numbers to look a little bit better. You know, the passing yardage numbers, uh, ha have not been, you know, just on, on paper, as you said, they haven't been uh, the greatest of statistics overall. But if you're 4-0 and you're winning games and you're making the plays and they need to be made, that works for me, for this defense. And, and they're a prime example of a group that's had some injuries as well and have not played their best brand, but they're learning, they're, they're figuring out on the go, facing adversity, uh, pressure pack situations, and they're getting it done. Uh, and so I think the the injury to Akeem Dent against Southern Miss is a bigger deal than what people know. Uh, I think Akeem Dent is a critical piece to the secondary with his experience, his leadership, his communication. Uh, as he gets healthier, gets closer to coming back, bringing him back into the fold will be will be big for this group overall. And so um, it, it's a defense that. Still has plenty of pieces up front. They're deep up front. They've shown their depth. They've shown their versatility. Uh, I think you see Kalen Deloach having a tremendous season with what he is doing, getting after the quarterback. And there might not be a, a bigger play of the year for any team than what D'Lo had on, I like to call it the holy trinity of defensive plays, you know, the strip sack, forced fumble, recovery, and a touchdown, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, he's been outstanding. Tatum Bethune's been great. 
Bernardo Green's having an all ACC caliber season. Uh, and so this defense knows what they need to do. Uh, I don't think they're that far away. Getting Akeem Dent back will certainly help that, Philip. And uh, they're a group that's uh, when they when they're asked and they're called upon at the biggest moments, they make the plays, they get it done. Yeah, I actually had wrote down here. My next thing I was going to ask: Kalen Deloach, big play versus Clemson. But you went ahead and uh, knocked that one out for me. So, uh, so we could move on. But that that was one of the things. Hey, making big plays, and like you said, hey, score more than the other team and hold them out when you have to. That's what they've done so far yeah. this season. Uh, looking at the rest way, of course, this Saturday, two thirty Central Time. Uh, they will be playing Virginia Tech. You mentioned three straight games at home this week against Virginia Tech, Syracuse next week, then they play Duke the following week at home. But just uh, what are your thoughts uh, on this upcoming matchup with Virginia Tech? I think Virginia Tech's playing better. Uh, I, I don't think fans should look at their record and, and just assume. Uh, they figured some things out between the Marshall loss, which I know uh, that, that was a tough one for them. I think they felt embarrassed after that loss uh, on the road. Um, and, and frankly, losing three in a row, losing to you know to, to Purdue, Rutgers, and Marshall, I think there was some soul searching there. Uh, they they figured some things out, and you know it, it starts in a, a lot of ways with what the quarterback's doing right now. And Kyron Drones, the Baylor transfer, who was not the starter at the beginning of the year, that was Grant Wells. He got hurt late in the game against Purdue, and Drones has come on, and he's just gotten better every game. And, and he's he's a dynamic player, Philip. I mean, he's big. He's 6'2", 235. He can move in three games. He's their second leading rusher right now, and he's got great arm talent. He can throw the ball well. He made a great throw on the first drive of the game, a 54-yard touchdown pass uh, to, to the receiver, Felton. Uh, put the ball, dropped it in a bucket uh, down the sideline to really get that place rocking and rolling in Blacksburg. And so he's somebody you got to watch out for. Uh, Kyron Drones playing will be his fourth start. Uh, at Virginia Tech, and so good player there. I think they've got some capable, more than capable wide receivers, some good tight ends. The Vitek's always physical. They always try and run the football, and then on defense and special teams, they really, you know, they've got that lunch pail mentality, right, uh, from, mm-hmm. you know, Bud Foster and uh, Frank Beamer through uh, the years, and now Brent Pry has kind of got that same makeup as a defensive guy himself, and um you know, they they figured some things out, and they may might have caught Pitt at a tough time. Pitt's a little bit of a wounded animal right now with some injuries along the offensive line. Phil Dracovic's trying to make some big plays for him at quarterback, and um, obviously they had a guy last year in Izzy Abandakanda who is a tremendous running back that's now in the NFL. So I think Virginia Tech's very good. Um, there's opportunity there, uh, I feel like, with what they've put on film. Uh, Florida State – is looking to run the football better and execute that at a higher level coming off of the Clemson game. Uh, Virginia Tech won't not, they won't make it easy on FSU. I, I find this matchup uh, to be compelling and, and interesting. And I encourage people uh, to not look at the record that Vatek has right now, because I think they're coming off of their best performance in the Brett Pry era with that win against Pitt last weekend. Yeah, you always gotta watch out. You get a team with confidence. You know, sometimes that's all it takes. And you know, coming into uh, that situation there. Well, Jeff, this has been fun. I look forward to Saturday, Virginia Tech, Florida State. As we mentioned, I look forward to the rest of the season, Florida State. Intriguing matchup, like I said, Duke. Uh, you've got a matchup with Miami. Uh, seem like they're they're much better this year. Of course, at the end against Florida, so it's gonna be a fun ride. Uh, these these last eight games of the season. But uh, tell people where they can uh, check you out, where they can find the, the Florida State Seminoles and the podcast. Uh, I didn't mention that at the top, but behind the mic podcast. You bet, Philip. Thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, the podcast twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays usually, uh, with the timing of it. But all your streaming platforms, just search behind the mic. It's the official podcast of FSU Athletics. And, uh, and uh, you know, also you can find us with our game day broadcast, download Uh, The FSU Game Day app, free to download. And you can also uh, check out our Behind the Mic uh, broadcast with our our view behind the scenes in the radio booth every Saturday on the Florida State Football Facebook page on game days as well. So uh, we try to give you a little look behind the curtain with the podcast and on game day, and uh, we appreciate you being a part of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of a lot of Florida State fans here in the Wiregrass area, so I know they're excited. I'm excited to hear you on this episode, I'm, I'm sure, too, as well. But uh, anyways, Jeff, I do appreciate the time, and I hope we can do this again sometime down the road. 
You bet, Phil. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, the big game this weekend against Virginia Tech and Gonos. Pre- I appreciate that time from Jeff Colhane, the voice of the Florida State Seminoles, here on today's edition of the Wiregrass Daily News Sports. And before we got here, just some news items to go over before we close up the show. Uh, another update on the Headland Pike County situation. Of course, yesterday I talked about the Headland suspension had been lifted. Well, now it's been lifted for Pike County as well. Uh, Pike County cleared to play versus New Broughton this Friday, which is big. That's a region game. Uh, Principal Jeff Torrance and head coach Mark Hurt confirmed that team will have multiple players suspended in accordance to the National High School Foundation rules for leaving bench area. Uh, Mandate suspension on 20% of athletic contests, which is two games for football, so they all have to miss two games. Uh, They could stagger them, uh, but – uh, they have both said that they kind of hope that they were able to do those suspensions rather quickly to get all the players back on the field. So we'll see. Obviously challenging for them, uh, being without players and the whole situation. Uh, we're being suspended and now going in. Uh, they were back on practice field on Tuesday, so going into Wednesday, which is today you're listening to this podcast or watching it. So there, that deal is done. The Headland deal is done, and let's just hope both teams can move on uh, from that unfortunate incident that happened on Friday night when these two played uh, after that big hit. Uh, some stuff that I think is high school football related, um, interesting stuff I saw on Tuesday. NIL in Georgia for high school athletes. NIL guidelines were passed by the GHSA by a 66-9 to 9 vote. Georgia – the 30th state in country to have NIL use in some form. Students will not be able to use school logos, names, facilities in any NIL deal. Students cannot be paid based on performance in games as well, a way to get student to another school. And associated with that, the Florida High School Athletic Association is in process of drafting an NIL proposal. NIL could be allowed for high school athletes as early as January. And the Florida part of that news story comes from Pete Nakos from on3.com. Here's my take on it. I am all for college athletes getting an IL 100%. I've, I've been backing that for some time now, even before it really was a thing. I kind of draw a line in the sand with high school. I just, and you listen to the show, or and when we were doing the Wiregrass High School Football Report every week, I talk to coaches and I ask them, when you hear the words Friday Night Lights or Friday Night Football, what comes to mind? And a lot of them talk about the pure form of the sport, where colleges got away from it, obviously the NFL, pro football. So then we kind of lose some of that. Will we lose some of that if we get NIL in high school? And look, Alabama has not started this, but you got to know it's coming at some point. So I'm going to use the Nick Saban line, but I'm going to alter it a little bit. Is this what we want high school sports to be? Because it will change. And I, this is this is me talking. This is my opinions. The whole thing Georgia said, as well as a way to get students to another school, that's going to happen. There's going to be some back channels. We just know that. It's happened in college. It's happening here. Try to get parents to move kids and all that stuff. So I think – I think this is a slippery slope, but look, it's here. It's coming. Uh, it's not going to stop me from covering the sport, watching it, uh, being passionate about, and doing all the things we do here for high school football. But I have – I'm not 100% against it. I've just had some reservations, and I just want to say we need to step back, and is this something we really want to do? And, yeah, of course, we talked to Jeff Colhane, the voice of the Florida State Seminole. So some Florida State news uh, from Tuesday. Mike Norvell spoke to the media after practice, said he enjoyed the energy of today's practice, and he gave some injury updates. Uh, two of wide receiver, uh, Ja'Kai Douglas, he has not played all year. He said he was out there and made some great plays today. And then left tackle, Robert Scott, who started at 11 games last year for the Seminoles, he was injured against Southern Mississippi earlier in the season. 
We just want to see him in that setting, and we'll see how he responds tomorrow to how he's feeling. He also talked about how he went up against the D-line, and that's kind of what that quote was alluding to. So we'll see. It is uh, interesting to see if Florida State can get some of them guys back on the field. Uh, already 4 no team, top five in the country. Right now, got to be the favorites to win the ACC. I think so. They were my pick before the year started. And it's just going into it with Florida State, I was one of these, okay, you got Clemson and you got LSU the first month of the season. If you just split those two games, you're good. But now they've won both of them. And I was talking about with Jeff, and you've heard Mike Norvell say this last week, that we're 4 no, but we have yet to play our best game. And that's scary. Because Florida State's really good, but they're finding ways to win games. The LSU game. The Clemson game. Look, they didn't play great against Boston College, but they just found a way to win. Held on late for that one. But they got matched up with Duke. We don't know the what's going on with Riley Leonard. That's a big part. You got Miami and, of course, Florida later on in the year with a rivalry game. So they've got some interesting matchups still left on the on the schedule. Yes, you've got past the kind of like the two heavyweights that were on your schedule in the preseason, LSU and Clemson. But now let's see what Florida State can do moving forward. I think they're going to be an ACC championship game. Who's going to be that number two team? Uh, you know, you might have thought it could have been Duke, but the Riley Leonard injury, we'll see. Uh, right now, I think it's got to be uh, North Carolina. But the thing about it, Clemson may still be the second best team in the conference, but with two losses, they have an uphill battle, uphill battle for them. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes out, goes down. And uh, that's going to do it uh, for today's edition of Wiregrass Daily News Sports. Appreciate you taking the time and making the show a part of your day. Got a fun episode for you tomorrow on Thursday. I am not going to tell you who my guest is, though. It is somebody people in the Wiregrass are familiar with. I'm just going to leave it, leave it at that. Remember, you can find me all the great places, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, wiregrassdailynews.com. Check it out. Check the website out. Get your regular news there. Get your sports here with this show. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please follow, rate, and review. If you leave a review. I will read it on a future edition of the show. And if you just leave four stars, you are just a straight up hater. You can always email me at sportstalkfieldjordan at gmail.com. And you can follow me on social media at PJordan SEC. Hope everybody has a great Wednesday. Be back with you tomorrow with a show I think you're really, really going to enjoy. Anyways, until next time, bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to today's Wiregrass Daily News Sports. Make sure to tune back in tomorrow for more of the sports you love in the Wiregrass. Check out the podcast at wiregrassdailynews.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Continue the conversation and connect with Philip on social media at PJordanSEC.